Regardless if you are placing a femoral, subclavian or an IJ line, there will always be an artery in close proximity. We'll review the anatomy and how to differentiate a vein from an artery using ultrasound. Let's start with the IJ. Start scanning in the mid portion of the neck, just lateral to the midline. Start with a depth setting of 3 cm. The vein is usually, but not always, more superficial and lateral to the artery. The artery can often be identified just by eyeballing. Due to the higher pressure, it's rounder, has a thicker wall and bulges with every heartbeat. And it's not as easily compressed compared to the vein. The arterial flow is pulsatile, but be careful with this. The vein may sometimes seem to be pulsating due to the proximity to the artery. If you are uncertain, use color Doppler and it should become obvious which is which. Don't cannulate the blinking warning light. Identifying the subclavian vein can be a bit more challenging. The vein is most often located ventral and caudal to the artery. In other words, it's shallower and further down. The vein is found below the clavicle, as you know from the traditional landmark technique. Here you see the clavicle pointing slightly upwards. We place the probe 90 degrees to the sternum at the mid-clavicular level and the scanning depth is set to 5 cm. We then slowly tilt the ultrasound beam upwards. The more superficial vessel that is closer to the probe is the vein. The deeper vessel and therefore more cranial is the artery. Note how the pulsation of the artery is transmitted through the tissue, making the vein appear to be pulsating. Here's another example, a shallower vein with the added bonus of visible valves and a deeper, pertinent, pulsating artery. Sometimes you just can't find the vein. It may be completely collapsed as it's a low pressure system. If you see only one vessel, as in this patient, always presume it's the artery. If you're having difficulties finding the vein, follow these steps. First, it's usually easier to find the artery, so start there. Slowly scan downwards and the vein should come into view closer to the probe. The vein is of course more visible if it's filled. In other words, we want to congest the venous system. There are several techniques you can use to achieve this. The traditional way to congest the veins is to place the patient in the Trondelenburg position. Pool blood from the legs will flow to the central vessels which expand. A word of caution though, patients at risk of pulmonary edema may actually be pushed over the edge with this maneuver. An increase of the intrathoracic pressure causes venous congestion. It's like placing a tourniquet on the central vessels. You can achieve this by having the patient perform a Valsalva maneuver. Our experience is that this is difficult in clinical practice. The patient moves around too much. A more elegant and a controlled version of the Valsalva maneuver can be achieved by removing the plunger from a 5 or 10 cc syringe. and have the patient slowly exhale through it. Now watch this video where the patient has a big artery and no vein in sight. With a controlled, forceful expiration through the syringe, the vein appears. Try this with the next central line you place. It's a game changer. Another trick is to ask the patient to cough. Place the tip of the needle in just the right position next to the vein and then be prepared to puncture immediately after the cough when the vein bulges. <coughs> There's no room for a shadow of a doubt that you've identified the vein. Here are some further techniques you can use. You can positively identify the vein with color Doppler by placing the vessel you believe to be the vein in the color field and then firmly compressing the patient's arm. The surge of pooled blood that is squeezed up appears as a flash half a second later. Pulse wave Doppler can be a powerful tool. In this example we've located two vessels and see how we've placed the cursor in the middle of what we assume is the vein. 
which is confirmed by this sloshy sound. Now compare it to the more aggressive pulsatile sound of the artery. Here's an example where this was useful. The location, the valves and the general appearance would suggest that the more shallow vessel is a vein, but the pulsatility made me hesitate. However, the pulse wave Doppler showed a typical venous pattern, especially when compared to the signal from the other vessel, which was definitely an artery. For extra credit, if the patient happens to have an ipsilateral peripheral cannula, you could use agitated saline to differentiate the vessels. See the flow of bubbles in the subclavian vein. So, at this point you have to ask yourself, have you identified a vein? If you are absolutely positive, scrub up and cannulate. If not, choose another site for your line or call for help.